I go Made a promise to my mother It's okay cause I'm gon' die for this I put my mind to this Watch all these people, how they treat you Got no time for it I fear no evil, got my demons I'm just fine with them And all these people think they know me It don't matter to me Cause I'm gon' die for this I put my mind to this Watch all these people, how they treat you Got no time for it I fear no evil All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Three Point Stance Podcast. I am your host, Caleb Everhart, and I'm with my guy, D. Gray. You know it. We in the building. Let's go. Still a nation. Stand up. Let's go. We back, baby. We back. Bring the energy today. And don't and don't sleep. That's playoff bound, D. Gray. Stallions, baby, in the <laughs> building. Stallions in the building. Shout out to the Stallions. We're doing a hell of a job this season. So how you doing, brother? I know you just made the playoffs and everything like that. So you excited to go get that ring in uh, Canton? Man, I'm doing a hell of a job, man. We're doing a hell of a job. I'm super, super excited, dog, that we finally was able to clinch that playoff berth. But it ain't done yet, man. We still got one more game coming up the, this Saturday. We go play against the Memphis Showboats, man. Uh, they got a great talent on their team, great pass rushes this week. So uh, it's going to be great, man. Can't wait, man. And um Finish sentence the season strong, man. D wasn't ready for that interview question, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just, how did this become an interview to myself? Like, it's supposed to be an interview for other people. Like, but it came on me. It's okay. It's okay. I see what's going on today. But uh, you got another energy from Ke- uh, from Caleb every time he comes on the show. Every time. Every time we start the show, he brings a um, great amount of juice. But yeah, man. We got some interesting stuff to talk about today, Caleb. Man, we had a lot of moving parts, uh, mini camp going right now, and um, man, whoo, man, got some interesting people coming in. Some of the guys I know personally, man, way back from high school, joining the Steelers for trials. Man, we had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 kick it off with that right there. The guy you know best, one of your former teammates, Jermaine Carter Jr., was in. For a tryout yesterday, yeah, yeah, it looks like it was yesterday, man. But uh, that he came in for a tryout, man, with uh, with Nick. So, man, I, I think that I think that was a smart move for Tomlin, man. You know, Tomlin loved those Maryland guys and love. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. DMV guys are hard working dudes, man. Come on, man. It's a, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not I'm a little biased, but it's true. But Jermaine Carter, man, played with this guy since uh, since probably about 10th grade of high school, 11th grade of high school, maybe at Friendship Collegiate Academy, man. And uh, he's a hardworking dude. One thing about Jermaine, man, he was always undersized, but he was smart, man. Yeah. Um, I think he's always been smart. That's kind of what helped his career continue to sustain his whole time now up to this point because of his smartness, man. He's loved the books, man. He stays in the books, man. He continues to develop as a player mentally before he really worries about his physical part because the physical tools has always been there. He hits, man. I'm about he's a bone crusher hitter, man. I'm about I mean, like, man, I'm talking about old school linebacker style hitter. So that part has never been an issue. But on the size has always been kind of his knock. But, I mean, he always stepped up to the play and made plays. Special teams, a great player, special team. Defensively, he's a guru mentally when it comes to defenses, man, and uh, uh, dissecting offensive, offensive schemes, man. So I, I think that was a smart move by Tomlin bringing those guys, bringing those two guys in, and uh, especially my guy Jermaine in, man. I think that's they'd be it actually be a good fit for him, man. I think he'll find a good role on special team, if not coming in and playing behind Roberts or someone to get hurt. So, man, I'm excited for him, man. I don't know how much film you've watched on him, but uh, he had a great, great productive time in Carolina, man, before – I think last season he moved to Cleveland. He played for he was on Cleveland practice squad for a little bit. And then towards the end of the season he got going, he got acclimated a little bit. But uh for the most part, man, um he's a very active player, man. Very active, four speed player, don't take plays off. I mean, he just he brings his hard head every time he comes to work, man. Yeah, and then uh, as far as those tryout wins, obviously, you know, Jermaine's middle linebacker and Nick, uh, I think it's Kowatowski. Or uh, something like that. How you say his name? It was surprising to see those middle linebacker linebackers come in for the tryouts because you know we've seen, you know we've seen and heard what Mark Robinson's been able to do in camp. So you see that, you know, you see that article pop up, and you're like, I I, I don't know what what's going on. And then yes, the other day, um, Terrell Austin said, you know, Mark Robinson is doing great things. We expect yeah. him to be completely ready to compete for a starting job next season. Wow! And it was a little—it was, was a little shocking. 
Because, you know, like we just had that talk with Ryan too. And, you know, Vince Williams is out there talking about him. And everybody's talking about him, how he's doing this and that. I mean – I mean, I mean, let's be real. I mean, for a starting spot, man, you got Roberts coming in. You got Holcomb, Hol- Holcomb. Yep. That guy from the Skins that came in for Commanders, excuse me, come in, man. So you got veteran guys that came in and playing in them. They still trying to mold Mark, man, into a player they need him to be. Because once again, like we just talked about before, it's hard to take on that load of that backer position that – Tomlin puts on those guys, man. He puts a great amount of responsibility on those guys to show up every day, to get people lined up, to make plays and be physical out there, man. That's a lot to put on, as you've seen, what happened to Devin Bush. And you don't want that to happen to another guy. So you want to get guy to be really ready when it's time for him to take over that spot. So you got a guy like Roberts going to be in the middle, man, that's played a lot of ball, man, for who? Uh, Patriots. I mean, yep. I mean, come on. Patriots, man, that's a hard system to play for, man. And uh, I mean, that guy excelled in that system, man. So you want a guy like him to, man, to be able to, be able to step into this role and be able to take on that responsibility because he know how to. Yep. Mark is still learning the system, still learning how to be a pro. I mean, he has a great amount of left athletic ability to continue to make plays out there, but I don't think he's yet ready to start. Yeah, and I think a perfect example of what we can expect from Mark Robinson once he gets it all together is that Ravens game that Kenny, you know, drove down the field and won because Mark Robinson was a big part of the defense in that game. Mm -hmm. Um, So, again, I don't think it's – I still think Mark Robinson's obviously going to play this year. I think he's going to – Yeah, of course. He's going to fill in that Rob Spillane role that we saw uh, last year. And then, obviously, we have Keanu Neal now, who's sort of a safety slash linebacker um, to kind of fill in that void for Terrell Edmonds being gone. Um, yep. So there's there's even that too because he played linebacker last year in Dallas, uh, Keanu Neal. Um, mm-hmm. So I mean, there's there's a lot of good things going on with this defense, and I want to talk about a specific somebody that has been rolling around uh, the news with the Steelers being heavily interested, and they've been showing their hand when it comes to it. Is Chase Young? Hmm. I mean, Chase Young, man, once again, another DMV guy. It doesn't it doesn't shock me that, once again, <laughs> Tomlin is going to go get a guy like Chase Young, man. Once again, he's a DMV cat, man. Tom, Tom loves us DMV guys, man. And uh, he, have a, he have a net for grabbing those DMV guys, especially the D.C. and Maryland area guys. But uh, Chase Young, man. I mean, he he had a rocky, you know what I'm saying, past couple of years because of his injury. But once again, man, injury is a hard thing to come back from, man. And uh, I know a lot of people's knocking Chase Young right now about he's still a good player, but mm, we don't know if he's worth the money. But Chase Young is worth every dollar. Let's be real. The guy has been at a monstrous rookie year. Man, he's a rookie killing tackles, man, making plays. You know what I'm saying? So when we get all of the things for Chase Young is getting him back to healthy. How do we get Chase Young back to feeling like Chase Young again? You know what I mean? How do we get that knee brace off him and get him moving again, get him flowing in, into the lanes that he know he can play in? And um, I think that's the that's the the hardest part right now if I'm a coach. how it, we I just don't know what I would get out of Chase Young. Would I get a whole 100% out of him or would I get a timid 80% tiptoe, go sometimes, take a play off? And that's the part we don't know. But a healthy Chase Young, 100%. We need him in Pittsburgh, man. He's going to help blaze the edge. But once again, it brings me back to one of those questions like I asked about like Broderick Jones. I know everybody can say I'm on Broderick Jones a lot. <laughs> but now nah, I'm going to strip this back now to defense. Why go get Chase Young? Where do he play at? He would. Chase uh, Young is a starter. Chase Young is a starter. Let's be real. Chase Young is a starter in this NFL league. Yeah, who does he play over? I Smith. So who do he play over? I High Smith or does he play over uh, TJ? So in this situation, like I think you and I can both agree that when Bud Dupree's healthy, he's a starter in the NFL. We right. were we were talking about. I know we uh, brought in Marcus Golden and everything like that, uh, which was a solid pickup, and we drafted Nick Herbig in the fourth round. Right. Um, but I mean. What a perfect opportunity for Chase to revitalize his career, basically, with the injuries he's coming off of, you know, sort of like Bud was, you know, uh, when we were talking about bringing him in. And then, yeah. you know, how much our linebacker, uh, TJ, likes to keep fresh for the fourth quarter. Now you're going to yeah. add, if you bring in Chase Young, you have a guy that can go fill in for Alex Highsmith now, too. So then you have, there's really no, I mean, I'm not saying Chase Young's TJ Watt. But 100%, 
Chase Young is, isn't far off from uh, Fred. And that's my point. And that's my point. Why do you bring a guy in like here to be a role player? I mean, me personally, I wouldn't want to do that when you already have that in her big. You had that in Marcus Golden. Yeah. By bringing in a guy electrifying like him, you bring him in to come and play right now. But who are you bringing him in to start over? Because he's not playing three tech. He's not playing a shade, which is on the nose. He'll be playing the edges. And TJ is not losing his spot. He's the king of Pittsburgh. I, I don't think so. Smith, and High Smith has worked his tail off and, and played amazing these past few years. So why do you bring this guy to be a role player when you have those guys already on the bench waiting? Because he's hungry. I just don't see it. He's, he's, he's hungry and ready to prove it. Yes, he's hungry and ready to prove it, but he would never be a starter in that system because yeah. of what they had already – foundation they had built already. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So why do you bring a guy in there and make him ride the bench and just collect a check? We, hey, we want guys to come in and play and contribute and be big-time – you know what I'm saying guys that's making history, you know what I mean? Yeah, and Chase won't be able to do that there when he's in and out, like he's in one play, he's out the next series, and that, cause that's what it's going to be because you got Herbert that's going to gonna rush his tail off, you yeah. got Marcus Golden as a savvy veteran, and then you have Chase Young. Yeah, I mean, they, it's not enough plays in the game to get this guy a month amount of reps to be the caliber player Chase we all know can be in this system, it just doesn't fit. But then imagine imagine this. You know how Mike, Tom, Mike T likes to uh, use his defenses. Like last year it was um, minus uh, KZ's injury for the first half of the year. The big thing was the three safety sets that we were going to utilize because Edmonds plays, plays like a linebacker essentially. Right. So if you get Chase Young, I mean, I'm not saying we won't do this with Marcus Golden either, but if you get a guy like Chase Young, you could potentially have – Chase Young, TJ, and Alex all on the field at the same time. Especially I mean, with Mark's a li- middle linebacker right now, too. You sub out one of those middle linebackers. You put one of them as that extra pass rusher. Then you got Cam and Larry O as well. I like that thought. I like that thought. That makes a lot of sense. But once again, how many plays in the game, Caleb, are you actually running that package? Uh, probably like five. Okay, then. So it doesn't make <laughs> sense. And once again, it's getting back to my point. Why bring this guy in to play five special plays? It doesn't make sense. You have Marcus Golden, Herbig. Herbig is a savvy young guy that's under TJ Wing right now. Come from Wisconsin. Ah, break through the power, run through a wall, don't care. And he's hungry. You have that yeah. already. You have yeah. a guy that's willing to accept that role of being a backup and learn in the system. And Marcus Golden to him. Chase Young is not that. Yeah. Chase Young has been dominant in this league, and before prior to his injury, he has been dominant. And this guy is a dominant edge rusher, and he's not no substitute to no one. So Just I, saying that, and that, that's. And again, I get where you're. I get where you're coming from. Like, how? Where does he play in? Where does he come in like this? And like, like we've said before, you know, TJ taps himself taps himself out a lot. So I mean. In my mind, I could see those like if Marcus if Golden like, coming for the hit. Marcus Golden running on the field. Oh, Ty Smith get hurt. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, her big runs in. And, and guess what? We still have Chase Young still sitting there. Oh, okay. Now her big or them one of those guys say, "Oh, I'm tired now." Now he finally gets his role. It, it's yeah. just too many good players for him to be sitting on the bench, not being utilized. Yeah. Chase Young, let's be real. He's not playing special teams. He's not running off on kickoff. He's not doing no punt, punt block or punt safe. He's not doing none of that. So where is he going to get his contribution at on the field? Mm, it's going to be slight because you got too many heavy hitters inside. He's not playing three tech. He's they got big Larry O, Larry, big Larry O down there. You have uh, Cam Hayward down there. It's just no freaking fit, Caleb. It's no freaking fit. I would love to see Chase in that sense because I know the connection between him and Tomlin is, is something there. Something yeah. spicy is there. But in the grand schemes of professionalism and building a good team and getting to maximize, maximizing all of your players and their potential, Chase Young would be literally wasting his time there. Yeah, and I mean, it's – again, to me, it's, it's a 50-50 thing. It depends on where Chase's mindset's at. If it, it, that's even if this trade happens, because um, I mean I think you guys were drafting in the same year I believe because it was the COVID year. Um, uh, I was nineteen. I think Chase was twenty twenty. Okay, so that was your second year, correct? That was my second year. Okay, yeah. So um, 
that that year was the year the Steelers went undefeated and then lost to Washington in like week twelve. Um, and there's that big clip of you know Mike Tomlin saying you know I'll never lose enough games to get a guy like you, and that's kind of where all of this has kind of heightened. But then somebody claims they have an inside source saying that they're showing their hands when it comes to wanting Chase Young on the team. And I can see it working, but I get I uh, but my, get your point. But my my point is, if they want Chase Young on the team, it would just be a want. It would just be something. It's not a need. It would just be, I just want to have that on my team to say I have him too. Yeah. I mean, at that point, I mean, at that point, you will be getting Chase just to continue to rehab him maybe. But rehab and rehab until maybe the middle of the season and say, okay, go play when everybody's tired. I mean, me personally, Chase is not that. Chase is ready to go play now. Yeah. Whether he's ready, he's ready, he's 100% or not 100%, he's still ready to go play now. He's ready to be a key contributor and not a role player. Yeah. And, and I know that can sound selfish out of him or selfish on his behalf, but it's true. Dogs want to be dogs and want to play full time minutes because they know they can. And I feel like. That that will not be his role here, and I, I keep repeating that it won't be his role here when you have two star ed, booking edge rushes right there. Like the reason why I say star now because Adam Smith has earned his crown to be a star in this league. Yeah, in the past he had 14, uh-huh. 14, 14, sa- 14 and a half sacks last season. Yeah, I and, and how, and how, how many Chase Young had last year? Two, but he was also hurt. My point. Uh, yeah. My point. What, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, Chase Young, I love you to death, dog. But you ain't done nothing for me lately. Hi, Smith. TJ, that's it. Yeah. Backups, Golden. If you want to make that package, that's that little that speed or that 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 Nash car package, you make it out of Golden and Herbig. Yeah. Or Mark Robinson. Yeah. There I, you I, go. You know that's that's actually a good. I didn't even think about that. That's like the, with the way Mark Robinson plays. Why don't you just say because you know he's that you know typical Tomlin phrase. You know I'd rather say woe than sick him. So yeah. instead of you know, if the middle linebacker role doesn't work out, that man could be a terror as a as a blitzer. Even if you keep him at middle linebacker, have him blitz up the middle anytime he's in. Yeah, they'll know what he's doing, but good luck stopping him. And <laughs> and to transition from that to talk about something different that's on the same path is the fact that Stiller fans are talking about the potential of Leonard Fournette joining the Steelers. Let's be real. <laughs> Why would that ever make sense when you have a star? I mean, the king almost. He's working his way to almost to have a street sign in Pittsburgh. Najee Harris, yeah, yeah. be replaced with when well, I be replaced or be accompanied by another three down back. Doesn't make yeah. sense. That's what you have Alfonso for. That's what you have uh, what's his name? Big thirty, number thirty. Uh, Warren is James yeah, Warren still there? Warren. Yeah, yeah. J- Jalen Warren, yeah, Jalen Warren, excuse me, Jalen Warren still there. You have those type of guys still there. Not saying those guys are less talented, but they're not as at the top of the line of, I would say, as Leonard Fournette. So why would you bring Leonard, Leonard Fournette in there for? Oh, maybe to play fullback. I mean, we could have two runners out of the backfield with fullback of those two. That would be dangerous. But how often would that package come up? We're we going to run T-Bone? I Let's mean, be- I, I don't know. But see, now – now you talk about fullback. I mean, then that's taking snaps away from Connor Hayward, who's uh, you know a Swiss Army knife out there. There we go. Him, there we go. Now, him, now you're speaking my language. Yeah. Now you're making. My, now you're speaking my language about Chase Young and about Brody Jones. Yeah. It just don't make sense. Like I'm not. I, I'm not the smartest in the world, but I do know ball, and I do know that football is about a money thing and about getting the best out of every player. And, and, and they could go cheaper by keeping Alfonso and and, and Jalen. Why would they go spend a bag on Jay, on on, on uh, Leonard Fournette when you already have Najee Harris right there as playing key snaps every every snap? I mean, let's be real. It's Najee only gonna come out probably a few plays of the game, unless due to in, maybe injury or something. But other than that, man, he might play through that. He don't get tired. So Alfonso, good luck. <laughs> James Warren, good luck. I mean, just being real. And if you bring Leonard Fournette there, <laughs> good luck. Yeah, yeah, that's. I'm so I'm so happy you brought up like the the Twitter people because that that really felt like you know you were uh, in your inner Drake right there. You know, Twitter fingers turned to trigger finger. Hey, <laughs> uh, hey, no shots fired, please. Twitter has been coming at me enough. Like, oh, who's Derwin Gray? Who's that? I mean, hey, I, hey, I'm nobody in this world. Hey, I, I just made some good money in my life. That's all. <laughs> Thanks to the Steelers, I made some good money in my life. Thanks to the Steelers, he was a seventh round draft pick. What were you guys? 
we we weren't we weren't much. I don't know. Can't find them. Can't find them. <laughs> but I do love you guys though, because without you guys, that show great love when I was first drafted. Great love for letting me. Instagram went crazy that day. Yeah, we, but yeah, man. Another, yeah. but but another guy that is blowing it up right now, man. Um, and and it's probably one of your favorite groups right now. One of my favorite groups, man. Uh, led by not Deontay, but George Pickens. Led by George Pickens and Calvin yeah, Austin, man. The fast guy, man. I mean, the guy's blowing past Pat P. Yeah, Pat P. Has so much great things to say about him. But it's it's, it's a great question, man. That a lot of people are thinking about, man. Do you think? Calvin Austin is going to be a legend in Pittsburgh, or will he just be an okay player when his career is said and done? Will he just been a guy with a lot of flashes? I think – so, like, coming in last year, obviously this is something you and I talked about heavily last year um, before his injury. Uh, my personal opinion, he's a really great route runner with his speed, and he knows how to use his speed. So, I think – if he hits his potential, he's going to be a great player for Pittsburgh, I think. And if he does hit his potential, I think that means DJ is probably not going to be here after his contract's up. I think when you say good. when you say he hit his potential and not hit his potential, what could be some leading causes that can make him not hit his potential in your eyes? Just not making not making the plays, not making the right stuff, and not you know if the injury thing sticks, you know. I mean that's that's been the Steelers' mo with these speedy guys. You know we had Dre Archie you, back in the day, and do you feel like with the offense that they run, that sometimes that could be a limitation to his success of him reaching the potential of a great receiver in this league as well, too? No, because I think he's a perfect, perfect person for the Matt Canada Me offense. And this Me too, like, that's like, sweet. Yeah, like like we said, we talked about this uh, last last year as well. I mean he's he's that jet sweep guy. I think his he's got. Uh, or in college, he had three rushing touchdowns off of like jet sweeps or some sort of variation of that. The speed is there, man. He's a yeah. four three guy, man. I mean, personally, me personally, I think he'll find his role most on the slot mm-hmm. and, and beating these backers, man, one on one. And I think he's dangerous when it comes to that, man. Uh, I think for me, Mac, if I'm Matt Canada, I'm not really using him more down the field on these inside routes. I'm also using him on quick thing, quick, quick routes and making him make a lot of guys miss because he's a 4-3 runner, man. And uh, I think, man, the, using him to that best ability just opens up deep shots for other guys like my guy Pickens mm-hmm. or um, Deontay, you know what I mean? So, I mean, or uh, Allen Robinson. I mean, you got a lot of guys that they could throw the ball to now that are down there. They got a lot of hype now on the offense. So you spoke about that before with the six lineman and Daryl Washington, man. They got a lot of hype this year, man. And uh, it's dangerous, man. It's actually dangerous to see for a lot of defense that's going to be seeing them, especially in uh, the Browns and all those guys coming to town. And they got a lot to deal with this year, man, and uh, with that hype. And uh, physicality they brought to the offensive side of the ball, man, from the offensive front, from the dogness of Kenny Pickett, from the hard running of Najee, from those big outside receivers now, and Daryl Washington being a six lineman and having strong hands to break tackles, man. So, I mean, I just dissected the whole offense, man, into a big, strong ball, man. That's basically what they are, man. Yeah, I mean – if like like you like you just said you named you know you you forgot uh Pat Fryermuth in that conversation with with the weapons that are on this yeah. offense and Patty, obviously yeah. Najee and Jalen Warren are back there and who knows yeah. what Alfonso Graham or Ant Mac uh can do wow because um, we're, we're we're still big fans of Ant Mac over here <laughs> oh well of course that's my guy. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Ant Mac, man, I, it's going to be kind of tricky, man. I mean, I, me personally, I think he's going to find his role on special teams because this is a lot of competition, man. It's hard, man. And it's one of those things I tell people about the NFL. It's a business, man, but also it's so much god darn game competition, man. It's almost like one, literally one drop pass could be the last time catching a pass in that system. Yep. And, and, and it's scary, man. I feel like Ant Mac right now is hanging on dead life. Yeah. And it's not because of his ability. It's not because of what he did wrong. It's because of – it's just the lack of opportunity he's going to get. So one up, one miss, one bad opportunity, one opportunity he gets that he doesn't capitalize on might be his last opportunity. And it's sad to say that. So he's going to have to find his way quickly – Onto special teams such as like Benny Snell, Marcus Allen, all those guys in the back of the day, Dirty Red, all those guys, man, did man. So I think that um, Ant Mac will kind of save himself by being a huge special teamers, man, and that's the key to staying in Pittsburgh. And yeah, with with Ant Mac, I mean, all I'll say like 
last year, I think both you and I both were surprised when he got cut because he had a hell of a preseason. Right. I mean, obviously right. we brought him back to the practice squad and everything like that, but it kind of felt like, well, we still had Benny Snell, and obviously he was the special teamers that he was. And then, right. you know, the emergence of Jalen Warren kind of led to Ant Matt getting cut. But right. Ant Matt definitely didn't deserve it. it. They're just, like you said, he needs to prove his role on special teams. 100%. Yeah, 100%, man. And as we continue to talk about speculations, it's another big one going around the world right now D Hop. D Hop is a big name right now that's connected yep. to Pittsburgh. I don't know why, but once again, D Hop. I'm a huge fan of him, man. I think he's a yeah. great, crafty runner, man. I think he understands how to get open and stay open. And I think that's one of the big things about him, man. Me personally, if I had to choose between him and Allen Robinson at the time, if they both was on the market at the same time, I would took D Hop over him. But Allen Robinson's an unbelievable player, man. Unbelievable the veteran guy, man. Super, super smart on the field, has a lot of experience. But D Hops have a different type of swagger to him. He has a more of a, 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 a grimy feel that I'm going to get this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's mine. You can't stop me. The, inf- the infamous, man, video of him, man, back when he's the Texas, a young guy going against D. Hall, man, D'Angelo Hall, and, and, and showing D'Angelo <laughs> Hall who, who he really is. And that's my favorite video about, about, about D. Hop, man. I love that video, man, because that shows a lot about him, his inner dog, his inner fight in him, man. And that's why his career has been nothing but an uphill you know what I'm saying? Graph, as we continue to look at his stats and think about how he's been playing over the year. Man, if it was a way that you could find a spot for him, once again, he'd be a great addition. But do they need him? No. It wouldn't work, man. It wouldn't work. It wouldn't be a waste of time, man. But I would love to watch him just catch one pass and get released. Yeah. Just catch one <laughs> touchdown and, and say thanks, man. And uh, man, Maybe for the Super Bowl, when Steelers goes to the Super Bowl this year, they could just sign up for the Super Bowl game, let him just scorch the defense, and that'd be his last time playing. He retires a Steelers. That's just my that's just my biggest um hope right now. But uh that's just a thought. What you think about D Hop, man, to the Steelers? I, I mean, to the Steelers, I mean, I think we have our D Hop and George Pickens. I think he makes those plays that, you know, we right. would see D Hop make. Um like you said, if we didn't have Allen Robinson, um, and I think a big factor in that is let's look at the track record between them. How much drama has Allen Robinson caused with any franchise he's been? Zero. Right. What's Mike Tomlin like? What's Mike Tomlin looking for? Po- the post AB era now, guys that don't have guys calls, just, no issues. And I'm not saying D Hop doesn't put his head down and works because I know he does. But there's always something like there was something in Houston um, with Bill O'Brien. Now there's something with the Cardinals with Kyler Murray and all that. Oh, you know all that all that fun stuff. You know, baby, baby, but, put over there. Uh, I, 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 I. I, I could I could I could agree to that, but let's be real. Let's be real, and I'm not taking D Hop side here. And I'm not being a little biased, but I'm being a little biased. But um, let's be real. All the great receivers that really knew that they was better than every person they was going against always requested the ball. They yeah. always was always I need the ball, and which kind of technically been a distraction to the team. All the great receivers this Hall of Fame was always some kind of way. An issue slightly. Yeah. I would I would say slightly because they were just so great at what they done. And D Hop, I wouldn't say he's a Jerry Rice. I wouldn't say he's a Terrell Owens, but he's a great player in this era right now. That if it's not no slight, uh, I need this ball right now. This is my, man. No one on that side of the ball can stop me. Hey, pick it. Throw me the ball. I mean, I pick it, but pick it. Throw me the ball every single time. You you want that guy. You want that guy that's like when it was come down to the stretch. Like, oh, who I thought about? Just throw the D Hop. He'll yeah. get it. You want that because that's who he wants the ball. And right now, who can you say on our offense right now that you believe? I mean, it's all when it comes down to it, just throw the ball up to one person. George Pickens. And it's George Pickens. It's yeah. George Pickens. Yes. But – And Fryermuth. Actually, Fryermuth as well because he he, but, he doesn't drop it. But when you compare those two dudes' careers together, man, D-Hop been doing on a high level for so yeah. long. Yeah. And he's been making clutch passes for so long. So, I – I, I like him to Pittsburgh. I'm, I'm sorry. I like him to Pittsburgh. I just don't think he'd be right right now. Just D-Hop, just, just stay a free agent for the rest of the year. We'll come get you sometime to play off. We need you. I'm telling you. We need you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Deontay, De- Deontay probably be a little sore, hamstrings a little tight, and we might need someone to step in and make a couple plays and go to practice squad. I mean, with the, the way the Steelers have gone this year as far as signing receivers, you know, I mean, he fits that MO as far as, you know, what, D-Hop 6'3", Six two something like that. I mean, tall. That's that's literally what they've been going after this year. 
Um, right. you know, the shortest guys in our room right now are, uh, let's see, Anthony Miller, who was a dog last year, got hurt. Uh, Gunnar Ocheski, I think his time's done. His time was done after he fumbled that punt return against the Patriots last season. I mean, he, he, we no host. We forgetting about too, bro. We forgetting about someone else, bro. That he just brought in a serious inquire acquired. Just brought in from the XFL, Hakeem Butler. Butler. Yeah, no, that's- turning freaking heads right now, dude. Turning yeah. freaking heads. Yeah, turning heads at camp. Come on, man. Like that's why another reason why D Hop don't fit. They got so many guys that's hungry and ready to go right now. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, man. If you're an older guy, Allen Robinson, man, y'all better keep p- p- pounding. Keep your head hat on because you got these guys like this is hungry, man. They coming for a number one spot, man. And uh, that's what's gonna make this team so much better than last year. They have so much competition, so many great guys that can go play every snap for you. And that's what's going to continue to have those guys that starters continue to work their tail off because the people behind them is not it's not a gap like this. It's yeah. like this. It's one catch. It's one drop away from you being this the opposite way around. So with that being said, man, I really hope we end up keep, keeping a king man after uh, Latrobe, man, because I, yeah, I think he'll be a special player. Strong, powerful hands, man. Physical receiver, man. Has a knack for the ball. Want the ball. Man, he's got to look like he's a guy that just keeps his head down, man. I'd love to have him on the show, man. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's another one of those uh, guys that I've reached out to. You know, we're waiting for that uh, that message back. But uh, Come on. Come on, King. Come on. Mess with us now. <laughs> Three-point stands, baby. Come on. We hyped up, baby. We fired up over here, man. And like, like we've said in the past, you know, we try and be a uh, player-friendly podcast, and we, we just want to have a good time over here. So all we want to do is have a great time. We, but once again, we can't control what y'all say out y'all mouth. Yes. If you put your own teammate under the water or tell something bad about this or that or tell something that's going on the platform personally, that's your fault. But once again, come on, man. Come mess with D. Gray and Caleb, baby. Yeah. Man, with all that being said, man, I appreciate everybody rocking with this podcast today, man, rocking with the show today, man. And, uh, man. Come on, keep on coming back, man, man. Come on, man. We got that fire content every week, man. We're the best in the game right now. Yeah, you know, we just the the last few weeks, you know, we had K Dot, then we had Ryan Shazier. I had that episode with Wesley Saunders. I mean, it's it's about time, you know. It's just me and D. You know, we need you know we need we need our time together. You know, you know, you know we we got this, we got this, And, and you know to kind of piggyback off what D said about uh you know we're only one form of media for us. We can only control what we can control. We cannot control what the outside sources say. If they don't want to click and watch and see how it was portrayed out of said person's mouth, then, I mean, that's, that's on those individuals. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's all I got to say. I think I said that pretty well. (laughs) Once again, man, that's the conclusion of today's episode, man. Appreciate y'all. Keep rocking with us, man. Three point stance, man. We rocking strong, man. Shout out to Steelers Nation, man. Keeping us rolling strong, man. Shout out to our guy Nick, man. Continue to keep our shows up and running on a consistent base, man. Every week, man. And uh, we can't thank the guys that help support us every week, man. Include you guys on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, man. Joining our lives every week, man. Joining all our content, articles, everything, man. We couldn't do it without y'all, man. Once again, see y'all next week. I'm D Gray, and it's Caleb the Goat, and we out.